Um, it is a privilege to report to you for the third time since I assumed my mandate in, two, in, in 2012. And since I reported to you last year, there have been a number of developments in the international environment of the country. Belarus made welcome efforts to ease the regional tensions through mediation. The Riga Eastern Partnership Summit welcomed promising signs of European Union's Belarus relations and the country promised to consider resumption of the European Union Belarus Human Rights Dialogue. At the same time, the government's continued refusal to recognize the Council's country mandate is a substantial setback in its engagement with the international community. So is its refusal to accept or fulfill important human rights recommendations made to Belarus during the universal period process, making good of its commitment to fully cooperate with the human rights mechanisms of the United Nations, including on domestic human rights concern and concerns and implementing its uh, international human rights obligations is essential for a full integration of Belarus in the international community. Unfortunately, despite positive external developments, the human rights situation inside Belarus shows no signs of improvement during the reporting period. Moreover, the legal administrative environment for the enjoyment of human rights has further deteriorated. Just as for the last two decades, enjoyment of a long list of basic human rights is systematically denied to citizens and is made systemic by means of intentional combination of restrictive laws and abusive uh, practices. My findings indicate that no substantial reform was discernible and the government has neither addressed any of the entrenched and systemic violations nor has it created an environment for free and fair elections. In fact, violations continued and this is the case in particular regarding the rights to freedom of expression, association and assembly, the rights to just and favorable conditions for work and to the freedom to choose one's workplace. Uh, legal restrictions further severing these domains have continued. This is all the more disturbing in the light of the, of the forthcoming presidential elections which take place this autumn. Allow me to provide an overview of some major concerns highlighted in my report. First, let me tell you about measures, practical measures taken by the authorities. Compared to previous years, fewer persons were incarcerated for long prison terms in retaliation for their political activities. However, I would like to note that among them still is there, there is a former presidential candidate and he remains behind by since 2011. Since I last reported here, Alas Pialetsky, leader of Vyasna, a major human rights organization, has been re released and this is indeed a very welcome development. Unfortunately, his release has been as arbitrary as was his detention. And last week, I had to publicly remind of the further worsening uh, of the situation of political prisoners in Belarus ahead of the elections. The authorities extended lately prison sentences of several already incarcerated political opponents or imposed harsh conditions for them. They did this on the basis of differently formulated but similar claims of violations of internal prison condition regulations. 
I urge the Belarus authorities not only to release, but also to fully rehabilitate all political opponents who have been imprisoned. Former political prisoners as individuals having a criminal record are denied their civil and political rights, face supervision procedures, cannot run or occupy public office. Free and fair elections are impossible under such circumstances. Another entrenched practice that has continued and even increased is the arbitrary short-term detention of activists, journalists and human rights defenders. Administrative and preventive arrests, as they call it, continue to be used systematically and selectively against citizens who seek to exercise independently the rights to freedom of expression, association and peaceful assembly. In continuing denial of the right to life, the three prisoners on death row in 2014 were executed. The executions took place in secret. The families were not informed of the date of the executions and the bodies were not returned to them. In March this year, another death sentence was handed down. Regarding the domain of laws and regulations, I also have to mention several negative developments. Presidential decrees continue to be the main legislative mechanisms in Belarus, as they were for almost 20 years now. There has and there still is no opposition in its parliament. Despite some welcome steps taken to simplify the legal system, the independence of the judiciary remains undermined by the president's power to appoint and remove all judges and, and prosecutors at any time. Lawyers remain subordinated to the mandatory bar associations, which are controlled by the Ministry of Justice. Fair trials are denied by hearings held in closed sessions and by court rulings that rely heavily on law enforcement testimonies while defense witnesses are often ignored. Despite recent amendments uh, to the criminal code and to the code of procedure, criminal procedure, Belarus has yet to create conditions and make declarations under the Convention Against Torture. <coughs> Missing are both any effective mechanisms for the investigation of complaints of torture and investigation of alleged cases of torture. As highlighted in my reports, further restrictions were added which make virtually impossible any public assembly or expression of views which are not in line with that of the government. Especially pernicious are the new amendments to the law of mass media which have taken on the last vestige of free expression, the Internet. As a result, the authorities arbitrarily block independent websites and the use of Internet increasingly is interpreted as unauthorized public event which is subject to already established sanctions. The regulatory framework for any public activity remains unchanged and it consists of three layers um, which is uh, the permission-based system for any public activity, the selective denial of that permission, and the criminalization of organizations functioning without registration. In addition, made-up charges for tax evasion or swearing in public or failure to obey police officers, police officers' orders and often combination of these charges lead to cumulative sanctions. Um, just to mention one 
uh, recent case, the leader of the uh, human rights think tank Lotan, Yelena Tonkachova, was deport deported to Russia, of which she is a citizen, based on alleged speeding violations. Unfortunately, the situation has deteriorated not only with regard to civil and political rights, discrimination continues in other areas as well, from treatment of sexual minorities to labor rights. In a country where 70 to 80 percent of the workplaces are in state-owned sectors, the precarious employment conditions have worsened since last year. Short-term contracts are the rule, rather the exception, heightening the insecurity for millions of Belarusians. And this is particularly disturbing since recently another decree was adopted on parasitism, which provides for taxes on all employable citizens who are not employed and punitive measures against those who do not work. And several conditions continue to amount to forced labor in practice. Ladies and gentlemen, let me continue and conclude by reiterating that I stand ready to offer my cooperation with the government of Belarus to implement its international human rights obligations. Of course, I'm ready to do that within my mandate at any time and in any way that the government finds opportune. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Harasti.